Isn't that so amazing? So this week, I mean, last Sunday, we raised oh, just over $12,000 to send to Southwest Florida. And so, you know, we talk a lot about how our mission's giving. So, you know, we raised that money. We sent it directly to Next Level Church in Fort Myers, where they are ser- they've served tens of thousands of people. Um, they still have a lot more to do. And we also partner with Convoy of Hope all the time. We're constantly, we, we support them monthly. And they're down there in Fort Myers, boots on the ground, c- giving people food, water, hope. They're helping people restore their homes. So we are so thankful that you saw a need and you met it last Sunday. But also, we also got to take a group on Monday down there. We took about 40 Wellspringers down to Next Level Church. They left at like 6.30 in the morning. And they got to do all kinds of things on there. They served meals at their downtown location. I think they cut tree branches. I think they helped people move debris from their yards. They got sunburnt, <laughs> as you can see in that picture. But it was such a great time to just be the hands and feet of Jesus. And honestly, just to partner with other churches. I mean, Pastor Matt and Sarah, who we just saw in the video, they are Joey and I's pastors, and they would do anything for Wellspring, so we were like, we're going to do anything for the people of Next Level. So um, if you're still interested in giving or serving, the link is still on the website to give. We might be planning some more trips down there to actually continue to serve with them, but just be aware in the coming days, in the coming weeks, of what you can do to continue to serve the people of Southwest Florida. But we have something else special happening today. Who knows what it is? The Chicago Marathon. (laughs) You guys are like, why would the Chicago Marathon matter to us? Well, we have a team. We have Team Wellspring at the Chicago Marathon right now. They actually, I think, are probably about eight or nine miles in. They didn't start till about 9.30 our time. Um, You can throw the picture back up there real quick so everybody can see them. This was last night. They look a lot more excited last night than they probably were when they were at the start line this morning. Then they probably look right now. They looked a lot more excited. So we were about $3,000 short of our goal to provide clean drinking water for, um, really for our community that we support in Africa through World Vision. So if you're still interested in giving, I know that link is everywhere too, but be praying for them because they're only about eight miles in. And people keep asking me, how long is a marathon? And I'm like, come on, people. How do people not know how long a marathon is? <laughs> Even if you haven't run it, it's 26.2. It's the sticker on the car. Yes. Really. So, so if you are only eight miles in, you still have about six, am I right? 18 miles left to go. So, yes, I have not gotten any text yet, but I am tracking the team on the app. So we will see. It's a little bit colder there than it is in Florida. <laughs> so be praying for them, guys. I know they're excited to do it. What, a, what an amazing opportunity to do that with World Vision. And we were one of the top 15 teams within the World Vision team um, that raised money for clean, clean drinking water. But needless to say, thank you for all your support. Um, if, you are first t- if you're here the first time visiting us, or maybe you just haven't gotten connected to Wellspring, welcome. My name is April. I, am, I have the privilege of co-pastoring, co-leading with um, my husband, Joey who's running in Chicago right now. That's why he's not here. (laughs) But we just want to welcome you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for just allowing us to be part of your worship experience this morning. But if it's your first time or the first time in a long time or you have not got connected, we would ask that you take the blue card in the seat back pocket in front of you. Fill it out. Take it to the uh, guest services or anybody in a green shirt in the lobby, and they would love to answer any questions for you or and, and actually give you a gift. For just being our honored guest today. So today, we are in a series called Big Questions, Real Answers. And we're, the whole month of um, October, we are going to answer the questions you guys have been asking. So today, we're going to a- actually answer three questions. That's why all of us are up here. We're going to just have a candid conversation. We're going to talk about some things from our own experience, from what the Word of God says about certain things. So we have Pastor Ryan Spoon, who is our executive pastor of Creative Arts. What's up? Up here. <laughs> His wife, Lanisa Spoon, who Hello. does all things communication, social media marketing here at Wellspring. And then Pastor Johnny Granger, who is our new executive pastor of discipleship. Yeah. <laughs> Formerly our executive pastor of Next Gen. So, like Lanisa said last service, the adults get Pastor Johnny. A little more Pastor Johnny. Get a little more Pastor Johnny now than the kids. <laughs> 
But we're just going to start today with some funny questions just to open us up, okay? We're all going to loosen up a little bit. Remember last week we did some hashtag asking for a friend and, you know, those questions that you're afraid to ask or afraid to say that you were the one that asked them. So you're like, oh, I'm asking this for my friend. But you're really asking it for yourself. So, Pastor Ryan, I got a question for you. What is one thing that you are unwilling to share? And I'm not talking about a secret. I'm talking about a thing. What is one thing that you're like, do not touch that. That is mine. Um, I would say my deodorant. <laughs> I don't use a spray deodorant. You know, I'm watching out for the, the ozone or something, right? <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't think you would want to borrow my no, deodorant. No, nobody either, wants so. to borrow that. <laughs> Who's willing to share their deodorant out here? Like, wow. you, you would share it with somebody, even somebody you don't know? Okay, okay. You'd share it with your spouse or your kid, as long as they showered, correct? Pastor Joey <laughs> asked me for a deodorant one time. He, oh, like, he has like, no shame. Yeah, he'll use, any, he'll like, use no. anybody's. <laughs> All right, Lenny, so what's one thing nope. you won't share? Um, my toothbrush, for sure. Yes. And I, think we all feel, I think we all feel that way oh, about our gosh. toothbrushes. Yeah, I was going to say a friend's reference and the toothbrush and the duck. Anyways, if you're a friend's <laughs> fan, you know. Um, Ryan would probably say that I don't like to share the bed at all. Like any, any I take up the majority of the bed and he <laughs> is on the very edge. The so. edge. The edge. Come on, guys. <laughs> so dramatic. Come on, guys. <laughs> I'm like, it's a king size bed. This is my opportunity <laughs> right here. Come on. But we also said last service, Lenisa doesn't want to share this, her side. Like, if, how many of you go to a hotel and like, or you're away like on a vacation or visiting somebody, so you're not sleeping in your own bed and you're like, no, 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 that's my side. That's the side I sleep on. How many of you are like that? Yeah, like, I'm not switchy. All right, now let me ask you, let's go even deeper. How many of you, especially women, are like, no, no, no but, but it's too close to the door, so I'm gonna, I need to switch with you tonight. <laughs> Come on, come on. Oh, then it just screws up your whole sleeping schedule when you sleep on the wrong side of the bed. You can't share it with anybody, can you? Okay. All right, Pastor Johnny, what's yours? Okay, so I thought about it since this morning, so I wouldn't share my wife or my drink. Your wife, okay, <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> we should have been more clear, and we're not talking about your spouse. That's I know. just a given you don't share that. toss that out there. <laughs> but it's funny because my wife will take a drink of my drink, and she'll leave her lipstick on my straw. So it's then hers. It's then it's hers. Yes. And I'm done. Yeah. Gotta I, get feel, a new straw. I feel the same way about straws. If somebody touches my straw or like there's a chance they might have breathed on my straw, <laughs> especially my children, it's like, okay, that can just be yours now. You can have it. Or like, or your ice cream cone. Who lets any, like, who lets somebody else lick their ice cream cone and is fine with it? <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's just like, he'll share you do everything. It all. <laughs> Anthony shares everything. <laughs> All right, so that was just fun. Now, now this is the big debate. Come on, you guys got to be, you got to be honest. This is the debate that is like just sweeping the nation right now, okay? Does anybody think they know what it is? Pastor Ryan, do you like pumpkin spice lattes? <laughs> no. <laughs> They're disgusting. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's like milk and potpourri. With some orange food coloring. With some orange <laughs> something in there. Like, come on, where are the black coffee drinkers at in their house this morning? That's what I'm talking about. All right, Lenisa. I don't you like love a coffee. Spice latte? I, okay. No, I don't like pumpkin I, I spice. I would have to say, I don't know how much coffee is actually in a pumpkin spice That's latte. True. That's true. I do like pumpkin spice chai tea lattes, though. All my fellow chai tea lovers. That's actually really good. Really good. I don't <laughs> know about Dunkin's. And you can order that at the cafe, can't you? You can. You can get a pumpkin <laughs> Plug chai. Plug cafe. Go to the cafe and get yourself a nice little beverage. All right, this whole thing isn't going to be a comedy act, I promise. Yeah. All right, Pastor Johnny, are you a pumpkin spice latte? I think pumpkin pie spice should be in pumpkin pie. That's it. Who, who agrees with Pastor fair. Johnny? Fair. That'll preach. Wow. <laughs> I told you it was like the biggest debate right now. Come on, guys. You know. You see it all over the news, all over your social media. They're not really everything. following me there. They aren't following everything. me, are they? I know. I think it's maybe because we live in Florida, too. You guys still feel like it's summer, don't you? So today, we're just going to talk about um, three questions that, that we chose out of a list of a lot of questions that we get asked a lot or topics that we 
that people say, hey, can, we, can you guys do a series on this? Or do we have a class about this? So we pulled three f- from there for us to discuss today. And um, we hope that it encourages you, c- encourages you. We hope that it gives you some tools. I hope that it, you know, um, just uh, God just deposits a word into your heart today through these three questions, okay? So our first question, Pastor Ryan, let's talk about spiritual gifts. So tell us about your spiritual gifts. All right, so my spiritual gifts, the top three, and I wrote them down here so I wouldn't get them wrong. Uh, number one was shepherd, which is just caring, caring for people, caring for my people. Uh, administration, which literally just means steer the ship. So whatever the people I'm leading, whatever I'm leading, I have a spiritual gift that God has given me of, of steering that ship. And then the other one, which I see active mostly in my life, is exhortation or encouragement. Good, Pastor Ronnie, or Pastor Ryan. All right, Lenny, so tell us yours. Um, my first one is teaching. My second is discernment and then exhortation as well, encouragement. Good. And we all validate teaching with Lenisa, right? Like Lenisa can teach the word of God when she's, when she's given that opportunity. All right, Pastor Johnny, tell us yours. Yeah, teaching and serving. Okay. And we agree with both of those too. I always say that Pastor Johnny, you could give him – Especially when he's in front of a group of kids. Like, he can keep their attention like nobody I've ever met. Yeah. But you give him a topic, he can stand up here and he can quote the scripture. He, yeah. can, fi- he can come up with a story in the Bible mm-hmm. to, to talk about that with, like, completely off the cuff. So mm-hmm. God has given him that and serving. He's a great servant. Um, my top three are faith, um, apostleship, and exhortation. And, and I just took this again recently. There's a, there's a, and we'll show you guys the link in a minute where you can take your spiritual gifts assessment. But we always encourage people to take it multiple times throughout your life because you change and you grow and you, you're in different seasons. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you're growing stronger in one area and that's what you need in that season. So I, um, I would probably not choose faith as my most, but as I was, you know, really praying about it and reading about it and through like, um, you know, the validation of, you know, my husband in my life saying that that is something that I possess. You know, a lot of times I have a lot of faith when Joey has a little faith. Yeah. So it kind of balances each other out. So, um, Pastor Ryan, tell us what the purpose, like, why do we have spiritual gifts? Why did God give us spiritual gifts? Yeah, so we're going to go to scripture here. They're going to put this on the screen for you to follow along. I encourage you guys, um, if you hear something that stands out to you, write it down today and then go read the scripture about it. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 12. They're going to put this up. This whole chapter is really helpful for understanding spiritual gifts. We're starting in verse 7. It says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us, and here's the purpose, so that we can help each other. To one, to one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all of these gifts. That's very important. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So the purpose of a spiritual gift, and we're going to list them out for you guys in a minute, but the purpose of these gifts that we have are not solely for us. Now, you, when you use your gifts, sure, you're going to feel fulfilled and you're going to feel good about them. But right here in verse 7, it tells us it's for others. God gives us these gifts to build up the church, yeah. to build up the kingdom, yeah. to build up those around us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so... You know, in that scripture and even what Pastor Ryan is saying is that that gift is given to you. It's not something that you're like, okay, I choose this one. This is what I want to have. And this is what I'm going to, you know, God has like uniquely designed every single one of us and gives every single one of us the, the gift that he desires for us to have, to fulfill our purpose, to, to, to further the kingdom of God, to, to reach people, to um, encourage people. So at, each of you have one. You understand that? Like, there isn't somebody that sitting, you're sitting next to that, that has a spiritual gift, and you're like, I just didn't get one. Yeah. God didn't give me one. Like, God did give you a spiritual gift. That's why you have to discover. And we're going to talk a little bit more about kind of walking in more intimate um, relationship with God so that really more of that kind of stuff can be revealed in your life 
Um, and if you're struggling to figure out what your spiritual gift is, like, we're, we want to help you. So let's talk about, so we, Pastor Ryan talked about how our spiritual gifts are for the body of Christ. They're not for us. They're, they're not to, to build us up, but they're to build up the body of Christ. So Pastor Ryan, share with us a time that God has used one of your spiritual gifts to benefit someone around you. Sure. Um, Lenise and I were at lunch just a few weeks ago. Um, with a couple of friends and you know, we went to lunch to hang, you know, like just to be with them and while we were there we, we began to listen to their story and what they were walking through in that moment and I felt like even as you were, we were sitting here I felt like the Lord enabled or activated these some of these gifts in my life to be able to exhort or encourage, you know, I even not only did he activate the gift, but he also activated scripture that was hidden in my heart. He activated the spirit that spoke through me. And so he used this gift of exhortation or encouragement to lift this person's spirit, yeah. to remind them of what God says who they are, you know, to remind them of what their identity yeah. is, who they are in him, and that their value is that they're a son and a daughter yeah. of Jesus. And what we watched happen was the spirit of God literally shifted mm -hmm how they were feeling and the direction yeah. they were going in that day. Yeah. Yeah. I like what you're, how you say that, um, Pastor Ryan. Like, sometimes we don't have to operate in our flesh for our spiritual gift to, to be activated, to, to work. Like, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit in our life, and all the work will be done through the Holy Spirit. You know, whether or not you're like, I got the gift of exhortation, but I don't really feel like an encourager. Well, allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life to encourage others, or or maybe you're struggling with... Um, you know, like you have the spiritual gift of faith, but you're like, I don't have faith in this moment. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart to, to have, for, to almost to have the faith for you. I'll just throw this in real quick too. And I, and I don't know where, where this all lands, but you know, the gift of healing is not one of the gifts that are in the top yeah. of my spiritual gifts, but just, just between services today, we had someone in the back, one of our vocalists that was, couldn't sing, mm -hmm. you know, something happened in one of the songs and they, I think in a joking manner was like, hey, do you have the gift of healing today? Do you, you fill in the spiritual gift of healing? And I was like, yeah, let's go. Like, yeah. so we prayed and God supernaturally healed her. I mean, she literally just led you guys and worshiped, worship because yeah. of that spiritual gift was activated in that room in yeah. us. Because yeah. guess what? Scripture says what? By his stripes, we are healed. Yeah. We claim that promise over her and the gift of healing was in the yeah. room. Good, Pastor Ryan. Yep. All right, Lenny, so what is a time that, you know, you've used one of your spiritual gifts to benefit someone? Um, so I use teaching often, and I like to do it through writing, usually. And I can even, I can look back on blog posts or things that I've written mm -hmm. before, and I read it, and I'm like, I don't think I knew that in and of myself. Like, it's very clear yeah. that God was writing yeah. through me. And I love spiritual gifts because they are for other people, but they're also ways that God meets you. God, if you feel like God isn't speaking to you, it might be because you're not operating in your spiritual gift. Because mm -hmm. often when I'm writing something, literally as I'm yeah. writing, I feel like God is writing words through my yeah. pen and he meets me and he's just, he's kind to do that. Yeah. It's for other people, but he also loves you so much. He's going to yeah. meet you in that too. Yeah, it's a moment where you can really feel the love of the Father for you. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're sitting there thinking, I don't know what it feels like to be loved by God. Like I'm telling you, you discover more about who God created you to be and the, and the person that he has designed you to be, you will see his love for you in just who you are and the things you get to do and the things you get to be a part of. And you're like, wow, like God loves me enough to entrust me with that or allows me to make that kind of impact. He loves me enough for me to be able to do that. So Pastor Johnny, what about you? Yeah, we were down in Fort Myers this week and we were getting our assignments because we showed up at Next Level in a holding room and and the, the lady who was kind of moderating, she's like, there's a guy, and he's really upset. He's been very difficult all week, and he just needs help, and we're finally getting to him. And, and so they sent us out, and we're like, oh, boy, we're in a bad situation. I thought, oh, you know, a spiritual gift is serving. And I thought, I can just love this man by serving him. I don't have to say anything. I can just serve him. Whatever he needs, I'm just going to serve him. And we got there. We found out he'd been in his home for 55 years. He's lost all of his family except for a niece. And in the storm, his house was waist deep in water. He lost everything. He just said years of memories, like we were just taking things out to the curb, and you could just see as, you could see Greece, gr uh, gr not Greece, you could see Greece, but grief and release all at the same time, like he was letting go, and he was, um, just when we were helping him, that we got, got him to a place where it was manageable, and he was on a walker, he was by himself, sipping on a cot, and we're almost finished, and he comes out and he goes, what size are you? 
That's always a personal question when you're a big boy. Like, <laughs> I'm an L with a few X's thrown in, you know. Like, <laughs> whatever. And he came back out. He goes, I got, I've got something. And he came out, and he had two sailing jackets. He used to sail a sailboat competitively. And he goes, I want you to have these. He goes, these will keep you, keep you dry in the rain. And it just broke my heart. Just as we served him, and we just saw the love of Jesus yeah. just wash over him. And he wanted to give back. And um, so we're just so thankful for that. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Um, all right, Pastor Ryan, let's talk about what some of the spiritual gifts are in Scripture. Because people might not even know. What, are, what is the list? So we're going to put some up here so you guys, you know, you can write these down. I even included where you find, some of these are in Scripture, or where you find these in Scripture. And this is not an all-inclusive list. Romans 12, 6 through 8, we see prophecy, faith. We see service, we see teaching, exhortation, the gift of generosity, leadership, mercy. 1 Corinthians 12, which is what I just read, we find wisdom, knowledge, healing, discernment, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. And then in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, we see apostle, we see evangelist, we see pastors, we see teachers, and we see prophets. Yeah, that's good. So look at that list. I mean, some of you might really be generous people, but you've never really put that with it in, into the spirit realm of, wow, I think God gave me this, the spiritual gift of generosity. Mm -hmm. Or some of you, you know, you might really be great at discerning things, and you just think it's a gut, it's a gut feeling. I got a gut feeling. I just, I just always know. No, like God most likely gave you the spiritual gift of discernment. And then there's the apostles and the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers. I mean, there's, there's, it's, there's so many, God has created us all so uniquely, yeah. so different. Um, we don't all have to be the same. We don't all have to look the same. We don't all have to operate the same, like, but we all have to operate together to actually be the body of Christ that's going to make the kingdom impact that he's called us to. We, right. well, some of us that have the gift of faith, we cannot make the impact we need to make if we don't have some of those other ones, you know, counteracting or kind of pushing us or kind of coming alongside of. So, um, Pastor Ryan, if people are sitting out here and they're like, oh, I look at that list, but I have no clue. I can't figure that out on my own. How could they maybe figure out? what their spiritual gift is. Yeah, so we're going to, we have a QR code for you. This is a spiritual gift assessment. So go ahead and take your phones out if you're interested in this, scan this QR code. This is the same test assessment we use in culture. So it, plug culture right there. If you haven't been yeah. to Wellspring Culture, that's Get a in. big part of what we want <laughs> to help you with is figuring out what your yeah. spiritual gifts are. I also think that you, if you just jump into serving, if you if you feel a, a pull in your heart towards a certain area, just jump in, and it's going to help you discover uh, your spiritual gifts. And we're going to talk about in a little bit about ways that you can tune into the voice of God as well. And I think that helps you yeah. figure out, you know, the direction that God's leading you in, in, in with spiritual gifts. Yeah. yeah, we definitely here at Wellspring, we really want you to grow in your walk with Christ. We want you to be discipled. We want you to mature spiritually. And this is some, some of you, this is a step that you, some of you have actually still missed is what is my spiritual gift? And then, you know, if you have questions about it or you don't really know much about what culture is the best place to go. Lenisa teaches culture. She can answer your questions. She can guide you on that. We have a whole team that can guide you. Like Pastor Ryan said, find a place to serve and see within that area what, what you're best at. Just because your serving in kids doesn't mean you might have the gift of service. Maybe you do have the gift of teaching or the gift of exhortation or the gift of leadership. You know, every single team that we have has every single gift being used on that team because that's how you create a successful yeah. team. The body of Christ, we're a team that, that God's called us to be successful. So um, thank you for sharing that, Ryan. We love uh, spiritual gifts. I know sometimes it can be kind of a muddy area, but we just want you to know, God's blessed you with one. Let's find out what it is. All right, so our next question that um, we are going to talk about today, our next topic we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about hearing the voice of God. Yeah. And so, Lenisa, how do you recognize, recognize God's voice? I love this question. And truthfully, when I was praying and asking God what was the main thing that 
I wanted to tell you, the one thing he wanted me to tell you is that you have everything you need to hear the voice of God. Every single one of you sitting in the seat, if you have given your life to Jesus, you have everything you need to hear the voice of God. It's called the Spirit of God that lives inside of you. He is the thing that helps you hear, understand, discern the voice of God. So we could talk about it all day, but if we narrowed it down... Um, There's three ways you can write these down that you can recognize the voice of God. The first is you have to know him, you have to honor him, and then you have to just turn your attention towards him. And these aren't like a to-do list, but knowing God is the same way that I know Ryan. When he comes to me from another room, I hear his footsteps and I know those are Ryan's footsteps. I can tell the difference between his and somebody else's. Or when he's with me, I I know what his presence feels like when he's with me. And it's the same thing with God. God wants you to know him. He is an intimate God. He wants you to have a relationship with him. And so how do you know God? You spend time with him. You engage in worship. And you you notice this is what God's presence feels like when I'm worshiping him. And then the most important way, this is not an addition to your life. You have to get into the word of God. Scripture says that it is the rock. It's not an addition to your life as a believer. It's the actual foundation of your life as a believer. And the Bible is the story of who God is. So as you're reading and you're seeing how God interacts with his people, you're getting to know who God is, what he likes, what he doesn't like, his character, the way that he acts towards his kids, the way that he keeps his word, the types of things that he says. So then when you are going throughout your day and you feel something or you hear something and you're trying to decide, is this God's voice? You're going to go back to what you know about who God is. Does that line up with the character of God that I know? Does that line up with what he actually said in the word? And then this is an important thing because you can hear something and it can be, you know, God or Ryan can say something to me and I'm like, okay, is that God speaking? But is that God speaking to me right now? And so if you feel or hear something, you're going to test it, but you're also going to see if it's followed by God's presence because it always will be. It'll always be followed by his peace. So that's knowing God. The second one is honoring God. And I really think this is one of the most important ones for our culture Honoring God is about living your, you guys, this is so important, living your life where you are removing things that oppose the voice of God. The things that you listen to, the people that you're doing life with and you're letting speak into your life, the people that you follow, the podcasts that you listen to, all of those things. If Jesus was in the room and those things were not honoring him, what that's doing is it's feeding your flesh It's confusing your mind. So when you're faced with a decision and you're like, is this God speaking to me? You're going to be crowded with a whole lot of noise. And the issue is not God's communication skills. God's really good at talking to to you. He's really good at it. It's usually our ability to listen. So the third one is just turning your attention towards him. This is my favorite because hearing the voice of God is not complicated. If I could just release a weight Living your life in a posture of listening is saying, God, I love you. I know that I love you. I'm seeking you. I'm pursuing you. So I'm expecting that you're speaking to me. So as I go throughout my day, I'm expecting to hear you. I'm expecting that you're communicating with me. You, You said when you're talking about honoring God, I think a lot of us are spending so much time trying to defeat the the lies in our life like we're hearing so many lies just every day in our head like every day like if they're I mean it's winning that battle in your mind but you're just you're there's so many lies and so you can't even hear God's voice because you're spending so much time just trying to get the lies out of your head so you're saying if we one way to to kind of a remedy for that Mm -hmm. is to take out the people who are not speaking God's truth to take out the, 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 I mean, we're bombarded by media every day, guys, but to take that out of your life, to take the, all the noise, the static out of your life, and then maybe some of the lies, you can start hearing God's voice, and, and then you can start saying, no, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's not of God, that's a lie. And I, I, I think a lot of you are sitting there like that today. Like you every day get up and you have, you have a whole list of lies that you're believing about yourself or whole list of lies of who God is in your life. And you've got to start defeating the lies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. You absolutely do. Yes. Um, okay, so, um, Lenny, so why don't you share, share three things that you do to hear God speaking to you? So if I want to hear from the Lord, and honestly, I'm in a season, you know, you can be in seasons where you're like, what the heck is happening? God, I need you 
to speak to me. I need you to direct me. I need you to guide yeah. me. So these are the three things. If I am needing God to speak to me, I'm going to go do these three things because they never fail. And again, God wants to speak to yeah. you, and yeah. he is speaking to you. So the three things that I do is I open the Bible. That's the first thing. <laughs> Get your Bible, not the Instagram Bible, not you going on social media and seeing, oh, I'll see who's going to encourage me today and yeah, see if it yeah, sticks. Yeah, yeah. No, open the Bible because nine times out of 10, whenever I'm needing God to speak to me, I open it and whatever I'm reading relates exactly to what yeah, I'm going yeah. through. So open the word of God. The second thing I would do is I would be vulnerable with godly community. So like Kimberly right here, I know that Kimberly lives her life to honor God more than she desires to live her own way. I know that about her. I've seen her make hard decisions. And so I'm going to go to Kimberly and I'm going to tell her, Kimberly, this is what's going on in my life. This is what's going on in my mind. I'm going to be vulnerable with her because God speaks through his people. Yeah. So I know that when Kimberly comes back and encourages me, I'm expecting that that encouragement is going to be God speaking through her to me. And then the third thing that I do, this one I love, we didn't get to say this last service, but I will simply practice listening by doing things that I love. God created you to love things so he can meet you in them. So I'll go outside in nature. I'll go for a walk. I'll play worship music. I'll start writing. I'll do things that I love to do, and God always meets yeah. me in them in, this, yeah. in the individual way that I need him to. Yeah. He's not a blanket God. Yeah, yeah. Very specific yeah. God. Yeah. He, lo he loves the things you love. He loves the things I love, and he loves me. Yeah, yeah. He wants to so meet talk, me. Lenny, so talk a little bit about... Um, Silence and solitude, that practice. So silence and solitude, we, Pastor Joey's talked about this before. This is a wonderful practice. Again, this is not about perfection. We aren't doing these things so God can speak to us. He's already speaking to you. Yeah. These are things so that you can practice and learn how to listen yeah. to him. God's not going to yell at you. It's not like you're saying, I'm going to practice silence and solitude, so, God, so now God's going to show yes, up. Yes, finally. No. Thankfully. I did the thing. No, no, no. Yeah. God is not going to yell at you, but he always speaks very clearly. Yeah. The voice of God is a very big difference than any other voice, but you have to listen. So silence and solitude is a simple practice. It can be 10 seconds to five minutes. It's yeah. literally you, usually, at any time. You're not reading the Bible, you're not praying, There's you no quiet playing. external yeah. noise, yeah. music, anything like that, and you're also practicing quieting your internal noise, your internal dialogue, and you're literally sitting and practicing the presence of God. You're practicing sitting, and I like to imagine God in heaven mm -hmm. or the person of Jesus in front of me, and I just like imagine being with him, and I'm practicing, God, what does it feel like when I'm with you? And it's a muscle. Hearing God is a muscle. It's a, it's a thing that you have to practice, so then I know what that feels like, so then the rest of my day, when, yeah. when I feel God, I reckon, I'm like, oh, I know. Yeah. I know who that is. Yeah. That's God. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, Joey and I get a lot of questions, and we get a lot of questions from, like, teenagers, and a lot of them, you know, if you're kind of that black and white person, like, well, do I actually going to hear God's voice? Like, am I going to be quiet, and then, like, all of a sudden, I'm going to hear this voice over a loudspeaker speaking yeah, yeah. to me, and that's not, <laughs> that's not what you need to expect, okay? And so, if you're sitting like, well, I didn't hear a voice, no, like, God, he, he has placed the Holy Spirit inside of you. To communicate with you. Yeah. Okay, so it's communicating with you through an emotion, maybe. Yeah. Or like or like maybe something where like maybe you're drawn to something, like, okay, I I have this feeling I need to pray for this person. Okay, maybe that's God telling you, I need you to pray for that person. Yeah. Or, you know, I had somebody recently say, um, they were ordering groceries and they were gonna go out and give the lady a tip who was delivering their groceries, and they're like, I knew God told me to give her $100. But I put it in my pocket, and I kind of ignored it, and I went out, and this lady was, actually, this was just like last weekend, I think, this lady was up here from Fort Myers with her husband and her kids. They lost everything. She had some family up here, so she was doing Uber and Instacart and all that stuff. And so the lady told my friend this story, and then she gave the $100, and she's like, I was so mad at myself. Because God told me to give her $100 without me having, I didn't need right. to know all that to bless her. Right. Right. She's like, so I gave it, so, I mean, she still received the blessing, but, yeah. like, there was just this moment where she's like, I need to give this lady $100. Yes. Like, and that's I God think, in your life. I think we self-sabotage ourselves yeah. a lot. We, yeah. we think, we pray for clarity a whole lot, 
when really we should just be praying for courage. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, if you love God and you're following God in your life, you know what God is yeah, saying to absolutely. you. That's good, Some of you in this room, you know what God is speaking to you in this moment about what you need to do, what you need to say, where you need to go, what you need to stop doing. But you're sitting there praying for yeah, clarity yeah. And you need to pray, God, give me the courage to take you up on your word. And yeah. I'm here to tell you that when you take God up on your word, he's safe. Yeah, that's good. Lenisa. If you don't hear him properly, that's good, Lenisa. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're safe in him. He's not going to be like, well, she screwed it up. Great. No, he's going to take care yeah. of you. Like he's a safe well, place and like to take Lenisa, him up. If you have an intimate relationship with God, like you can't, you have to, you have to trust. He's not going to yeah. steer me wrong. Right. Like he's just walk, just walk in you. boldness, walk in courage, walk in confidence, and he's going to show up. So, um, okay. So Lenny says, so share with us just one, like maybe, I mean, you can share multiple, but one way how we can learn how God speaks to us individually as, mm -hmm. as his sons and daughters. Again, I think it's this, there's, there's things you can, spiritual disciplines, of yeah. course you can do. Get in the word, surround yourself with godly community. Live your life in, in communion with God. Yeah. Quiet the noise in your life. But honestly, it's just a practicing. Like, I know what the voice of God sounds like for me. And it's usually the same. My heart will start beating. Yeah. It's a thought that comes, but it's like with this deep urgency. I'm like, I need to speak this. I get excited. Yeah. Peace follows it. Like, that's what the voice of God sounds like for me. But it comes with just practice, just yeah. loving the Lord, living your life, taking him up on his word. Yeah. And not being afraid. Like, you're a child of God. Don't be afraid to live your life following what you feel like God is, God is yeah, calling you to do. There's absolutely. some business owners in here where you are not leading your business the way that God is calling you to because you're afraid God has called you to lead your business in a godly way and you're not doing it and you start praying for courage. Yeah. You need to follow the voice of God. The voice of God will never lead you astray. And here's why it's important to read the Bible because God says things that you would not say. <laughs> he says things to you that are not about you. Yeah. <laughs> Hearing God is not like, God, tell me all the things that are about me. And he's like, I love you, but I want to talk to her. Will you listen to me enough to, yeah. to minister to her? Yeah, yeah. So That's you good, have Lenisa. to know God. That's good, Lenisa. All right. Lenisa's spiritual gift of teaching. <laughs> That's good. All right, so our last question today, and this is something that we get a lot um, of questions about, but we also get, this is probably our biggest um, opportunity to minister to the people at Wellspring and the people in our community, and we're going to talk about grief. And we're going to answer just a few questions about grief. You know, I know we all have an idea, and we all have probably walked through s something that has caused us grief in our life, or you have walked years ago through something that has caused you grief on your, and you're on the other side, or you're honestly gonna, getting about ready to, because none of us are immune to the feeling of grief. So Pastor Johnny, is, is grief defined just by the loss of a loved one? You know, that's a great question, because we often relegate it to that. Mm -hmm. So if someone's grieving, they've lost a loved one. And that's really a, a powerful kind of grief to walk through. But there's a grief of loss. Like we were in Fort Myers this week. There's a lot of grief down there. Yeah. And, and often, that's a, when we, we're experiencing a loss that isn't the loss of a loved one, sometimes we're blindsided by that. Like we don't understand, like I'm sad today or I'm sad in this season. I don't know why. Or we don't feel like we're allowed right. To, right. to have grief. Right. Right. I should just suck it up, right? Just suck it up and, yeah. and be strong. But when we allow ourselves to surrender to the Holy Spirit and say, hey, is there, what's going on in my heart and life? And he reveals something to us. And if you've ever been in EHS, it's one of the classes that we offer. There's a whole lesson on dealing with grief. And I had to realize that when I was in EHS, <clears throat> that I was grieving the loss of, of academia when I was a teacher, and I was grieving that my children were gonna go into college. And I hadn't even verbalized that or thought about it, but the Holy Spirit laid in my heart. I was able to release it and to go through the process of grief, just like when you grieve the loss of a loved one. Yeah, yeah. So Pastor Ryan and Lenisa, why don't you both share um, how you both recently have processed or worked through um, grief in your life? Yeah, so, uh, we're about two years to the day. What? All the grief. Two years of some stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been two years. Um, and you two have really, honestly, your, your journey of uh, processing grief has changed who you are. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think it had, has mostly to do with that we embrace the process. We walk yeah. through the process. Um, 
it wasn't fun. Yes, it was painful. But about two years ago, my, my father passed away. And just before that, uh, we found out that he was diagnosed with a disease that was going to take his life. We knew we had months to live. So our process began then once we, we knew that, you know, his, what his diagnosis was. And um, as we went through the process, you know, Lord, the Lord um, showed and was faithful. He, he provided. He restored relationships. I had to spend time with family members that would not want to be in the same room together. And as we did that, as we welcomed the Holy Spirit into those rooms with us, he, he, uh, he restored a relationship. He restored a relationship with my brother, uh, with my mom, and other relationships. Um, I remember standing on this platform uh, the week before my dad passed away, and I looked at Pastor Joey and was just telling him, how my dad was doing. And he's like, you got to go, you got to go, you got to get up there. They were in Tennessee. And um, so we, Lenisa and I drove up and my dad was to the place to where he couldn't communicate. He couldn't open his eyes. He couldn't even lift his arms or do any of that. And so the first thing we did when we get there is we gather the family around, right? This is a divided family. So I want you to see the picture. But as we jump into this moment, I grab my guitar and we begin to sing songs over my dad. And my dad loved to worship Jesus. And in that moment, uh, we're just singing some of his old favorite songs. Lanisa and my mom are on each side. They lift his hands up, and tears begin to roll down his face. This is, he can't open his eyes. He can't communicate. But he was inside in his heart. And in some of his final moments, he was worshiping the Lord from inside. And I'll never forget that moment as long as I live. The Lord was faithful to my family in the grieving process. We walked through this for a few weeks after that. And there's other stories I can tell you about God's faithfulness in it, but I can look back now and I can say, I'm thankful that I embraced the process of grieving. God restored my family. God allowed us the moments of being, being there with my dad and being able to say some things that I needed to say to release some things as he was breathing his final breath. God's faithful. And I believe that the process of grief is an intentional process, yeah. and we get to see God's faithfulness and God's character in that process. Yeah, that's good, Ryan. Yeah. Lenny, so you have one? I mean, you get to know the Lord so much through your grief. I've shared some of my grief with you guys through the miscarriage, but even just with, with your dad passing away and the miscarriage, because I think this is so important. Part of the grief was, it was me not running away from mm -hmm. the church. Yeah. And when I say the church, I mean my Kristens and my Kimberleys mm -hmm. and my Megans and my Aprils, the women in the church. The day we got home from our trip with Ryan, Stacy brought us dinner and she prayed over us. When I went through my miscarriage, people were caring for me because I allowed them to. And because I allowed them to, God moved yeah. through them and he spoke through them. And grief is not to be done alone. You can yeah. grieve alone. You can. But two things will happen. It will suck. <laughs> it will not be fun. And the enemy will be after oh, you so strong because you're alone. Yeah. You were not meant to grieve alone. Yeah. The Kellers were not meant to grieve alone. They're here because of God and because of people. Yeah. 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 Don't do it alone. Good, Please Lisa. get around yeah. people. So, Pastor Johnny, um, you know, we, we hear about grief a lot, but we, 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 we know it from that worldly perspective of here's this, the steps of grief. And, and honestly, you know, I wholeheartedly believe what Lenise is saying. Like, you can, you can try to do it on your own. And, it, and if you do as a believer, as a son and daughter, like that is really just inviting the enemy to say, take me away from my, from my tribe. Yes. I'm going to do it alone. And then you're going to end up alone you know, trying to fight this battle by yourself. So, um, you know, maybe some people are here, they're grieving. They're like, oh gosh, like, when is it, when am I, when am I going to be healed? When is it going to be over? What is, is there really a specific amount of time? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And it's the answer, the simple answer is no, there's not a specific amount of time. We all grieve differently. We all, it all hits us differently at different times. And, uh, when I, when I went through letting go of my dad and, um, surrendering my dad's life to, to the, to the Holy Spirit, and God said, do you trust me? And so my dad went home to be with the Lord. I knew he was healed at that moment, mm -hmm. and there was peace in that, but there was still an emptiness in my heart that had to be dealt with. 
And the Bible tells us that we, we don't grieve as others grieve, uh, but we still grieve. And, and Jesus was our example, I think, with Lazarus when he was there with, with Mary Martha and he waited. And one of my favorite verses in the Bible, John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept. It's beautiful. Yeah. That Jesus, the creator of the universe, took time to weep with his brothers and sisters, took time to share that sorrow. Yeah. And so if you've been through grief, you know that at different times, little things will set you off. Like when my dad first passed away, every time I saw a deer, because my dad loved to hunt, I would just bawl. Like that's, that, the God's speaking to me through the deer, you know. And, um, but even just, I was telling everybody this, this, this last couple of weeks we were up in Colorado, we went to Rocky Mountain National Forest. We saw two herd of deer. And I'm at a place now where I just, I just celebrated my dad's in heaven. He's with the Lord, and I can I love the yeah. fact that I can appreciate and love what he did. And it's a, it's a beautiful reminder. Yeah. Yeah, and so that good. process is messy. And um, there, there are stages, and sometimes you go back through them. But you just got to keep trusting the Lord, stay yeah. in community, and, and God's going to bring you through. Yeah. yeah, you can't do it alone. So we, um, we talk a lot about here at Wellspring how we're in the new family of Jesus. So you were taught how to do something in, in your um, earthly family. Like you were taught how to react, to respond, how to behave, what was expected, what wasn't expected. And there's a whole different culture in the new family of Jesus. So we, we want, you know, even to learn how to grieve as sons and daughters. We want to learn how to grieve in the new family of Jesus. And, and if, if you've accepted Christ, you've been adopted into that family. So Pastor Johnny, you know, we can grieve like the world grieves, or we can grieve like a son and daughter. So what is that like? I think the key thing is vulnerability and surrender. You know, trusting that God is in control. I mean, God knows what's, he's not surprised by our loss, by our grief. He's not taken back by it. And so as we go through those stages of grief, it's so critical to be in community. It's so, to be in biblical community um, because your friends will call you out and call you up. Um, your friends will say, hey, God's got you. And, and, and let me say this too. Sometimes, and, and, and I've been on both sides, people say stupid things to you, right? People say, well, at least he's not hurt anymore. And I want to say, well, yeah, but he's not here, so I'm hurting, so shut up. Uh, which isn't the right thing to say, right? But that's human nature speaking. Uh, so we've got to, when we hear something, that, especially when it's scripture, and, and we think, well, that's cliche, and that's on us. Because that's the Holy, the Holy Spirit's trying to speak to us. And that's when it comes back to listening and cl really claiming that promise. And sometimes it's a moment by moment. So, so when somebody says, hey, God works all things together for, for those that are called, like, for, for good, for those that are, there's too many fours in that. You're like, and cool, that's this, for me. this feels like crap, but I appreciate yeah. it. You're like, no, he doesn't. He's like, yes, he does. He does. He does. he does work all things together for our good. Well, yeah, even the summer we moved here, and it's a long story. We went through a lot of stuff. Like, I spent four days in the hospital while people were packing our house, yeah. and our stuff made it here before I did. It was a big mess. And I get back, and all these things, I was in an ambulance twice in one week for different reasons. It's crazy. And I get here, and Pastor Joey's such an encourager. He goes, God's really putting things together for you, isn't he? I was like, what universe are you living in? Like, come on, buddy. <laughs> and, uh, but then I thought, no. When, I, when he said that, and, and when I surrendered, vulnerably listened, I thought, you know, I saw God in every one of those situations. Yeah. And I saw God working in every one of those situations. And when we go through grief, it increases our bandwidth to minister. Yeah. Because we can walk shoulder to shoulder with someone and say, you know, I, I've been there. And God did this for me. I'm going to pray God blesses yeah. you yeah. in the way he wants to bless you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we know that some of you, maybe you're not grieving the loss of a loved one. Or maybe you're not, you know, on that process where you know that's going to be maybe a, a soon thing happening in your life. But maybe you're grieving the loss of a dream you know, or a dream of, Lenny, so you said something in the first service about um, walking through like your miscarriage, but God's, um, your plan and yeah. say that again for us. Well, I wasn't just losing a child. I was losing the dream, the timeline yeah. in November, we're going to have a kid yeah. and we're going to yeah. go to Christmas. Like all of those hopes and dreams, I lost that too. Yeah. So, so not, not everything that we plan is all everything that God has planned. So we have to trust this plan, right. but so maybe that's something you're walking through. Maybe you're grieving, your children have grown and you're now an empty nester and you're like, how do I do this thing with my kids not at home? And I got this person sitting next to me that I've got to, you know, I've, I've, I've got to have a relationship with them. So there's so many different stages in our life that we have to grieve certain, we have to walk through this grieving process. Um, and we want to walk through it with you. We want to teach you how to, to like Pastor Ryan said, be vulnerable. 
Like when someone asks you to really share where you're at, it is okay to not be okay. We don't expect that when we come and ask her, I'm okay, I'm okay. If you're not okay, it is okay. And Jesus came for the not okay yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of Please us up here, most of okay. us up here are not okay. <laughs> you know, there's multiple times and seasons in our life where we're like, we're not okay. But you know what? God's good. And he's going to show up. And I'm going to surrender to the process of what he's trying to do in my life. And you know, and everything we talked about, you know, knowing what the gift that God has given you and, and learning to really sit in the presence of God and hear his voice. And then, and then learning to really feel the real emotions of the things that we walk through in our life. It's really just this moment for you to say, God, like, I know you love me. I know I'm a son and a daughter. And that's the, when, when you get to that place in your life, the peace that comes with it and the joy that can come with it is unexplainable. So um, we just want to give you an opportunity this morning. So Pastor Johnny is going to lead us in just a time of prayer. Um, if you'll bow your heads and close your eyes. Yeah, so as, as Pastor Ripple said, just bow your heads and close your eyes. I want you to think for a minute if maybe you are dealing with the loss of a loved one and that's a, that's a heavy grief. Or maybe you're in a season of grief for the loss of something, fill in the blank. And maybe you're not even, you just, you just thought about it today, like, wow, maybe that's the sorrow that I'm feeling. Maybe that's a heaviness in my heart. I want to pray for you. I want to pray a few things. I want to pray first that you surrender. You surrender the Holy Spirit's leading and presence in your life, that you're vulnerable and embrace the process that God's bringing you through. And then I'm going to pray that God would bring beauty from ashes. Because as God works and transforms us and forms us into his image and into his likeness, it's for his glory and his purpose. So if you're in a place of grief this morning, we'd like me to pray for you. I just, as a mom, I want to ask you to raise your hand so I can see you. Just raise your hand so I can pray for you. Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for sharing. And we want to walk, not just pray for you, but walk this journey with you. So if after I pray and today, if you, if you need help, come see us. We want to partner with you. So let's, let's pray. Let's bring this before the Lord. God, we come before you today. We just thank you. Thank you for the vulnerability of these, these individuals that say, God, I'm grieving. God, I'm grieving and I need you. So I, I just pray, they, thank you, Lord, they took that step of surrender and vulnerability. And God, I pray that now they would embrace the process, the process that you have them going through, and that would, they would see you in it and begin to listen to you and begin to hear you and begin to act on what you're speaking to them. And God, I pray beauty from ashes. That's a promise in your word. That's just not a good thing that I say. That's a promise from your word that you will transform us into your image to be more like you and you will bring beauty from the ashes of our life. And in that, and in that, as a result of that, God, you increase our bandwidth of ministry and we can minister to those around us in ways that we were never able to before. So God, we thank you for these individuals. We thank you for your promise and we thank you for your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. Just keep your heads bowed and eyes closed. And some of you say, you know, Pastor Johnny, these are cool things that you said today, but I don't really know this Jesus that you're talking about. So maybe you're here in this audience, so maybe you joined us by way of uh, media online and say, I, you know, I, I, I want to enter into this relationship you're talking about. And as we talk about spiritual gifts and we talk about hearing God and we talk about grief, we, we, under, we have to understand that Jesus came as a baby at, at, at Christmas time, but that was, it was just the beginning of a story for us to understand. And he lived his life as a way to be an example to us. He died on the cross and shed his blood to pay the price for our sins. And then he was buried, but he rose again. And he conquered sin, death, and hell so that we could accept his gift of salvation so that we could become part of his family. So if you are here today and you say, Pastor Johnny, I want to take that step of salvation. I want to take a step and ask Jesus into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Um, say, Dear Jesus, God, I need you. I have fallen short. I've done wrong. But I know that through your word and through the words of this, of this church that you died on the cross, shed your blood, and paid the price for my sin. And I believe that. And I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me of my sins as only you can and to save me because I want to be a son or a daughter in your family. If you said that prayer, if you prayed the prayer, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. One, 
two, three. We want to put a card in your hand, um, a little green card that says next steps. And if you fill out that card, or it's in the, in, the pew, in the chair behind the pocket in front of you, there's cards there too, excuse me. If you just fill it out and take it to our guest services in the back because we want to celebrate that decision in your life and we want to help you take your next steps. And so we just say thank you for being with us today. Thank you for allowing us to share the ministry of Wellspring Community Church. And we're going to enter a time of reflection where our worship team is going to come back. And if you need to pray about anything that the Holy Spirit led in your heart today, whether it's the spiritual gift or hearing God or grief, our prayer team is going to be down front to pray with you. And then we have stations, we have candles, that if you want to have a prayer time with you in the Lord and light a candle to commemorate that prayer, you can do that. There's crosses to my left and right. And if you want to just write a burden, the Bible says cast your care upon Him because He cares about you. Write that burden and pin it to the cross. And then leave it there. Leave it at Jesus' feet. Or we even have communion set up. If you want to take time to reflect on the finished work of Jesus, you take time to do that with you or with your family. Worship team and prayer team.